Welcome to this bio brief. My name is Daniel Gover, and it's a real privilege to be here with you to share this case. Just uh, some brief background. I am board certified by the American Academy of Periodontology and certified in the administration of IV sedation. And I currently practice in Cedarhurst, and uh, I'd like to consider myself someone who specializes in soft tissue procedures around both natural teeth and implants. We have a 35-year-old male who presents with a chief complaint of recession. There are multiple buccal recession defects ranging 2 to 5 millimeters on teeth number 11 to 14. Also, we note there's a minimal amount of attached keratinized tissue. The bone levels are within normal limits, and there's no interproximal tissue loss observed. These are Miller Class 1 recession defects. And so in this particular case, we do expect to get 100% root coverage, depending on how we execute our plan. In terms of the risk profile and other factors that we have to take into consideration, the patient's health is intact. In terms of aesthetic requirements, these are visible when the patient smiles. I would consider this more of a medium scallop biotype. There are no bone defects present. We have keratinized tissue, although we are missing some on tooth number 14. So that's something that we would also like to take in consideration and see if we can regenerate. So what approach are we going to take? We're going to make use of Geisha's mucograft, which is a deogenic collagen matrix, and it's going to be used in conjunction with coronary advanced slap. Essentially, we're going to be using um, mucograft as a replacement for a subepithelial connective tissue graft. This is our preoperative situation. We can see that there's a host of recession defects in this area, some a little deeper than others, and like we mentioned on tooth number 14, there's a less of a width of keratinized tissue available there. So our incision in this case is actually what we consider a scooping incision. When we reflect our flap here, we're going to do a combination of a full thickness and then a partial thickness flap. We left the papilla. We then expose some of the alveolar bone around the recession defects, and then a little deeper, we have periosteum remaining on the bone. Then we're going to go ahead and do some root and bed preparation. We're going to clean up the area, and we're also going to de-epithelize the papilla so that we can expose some of the vasculature as blood supply for the graft matrix and the flap that's going to be coronally positioned. So then we're going to go ahead and place our geisler mucal graft. We're going to do so very similar to a subepithelial connected tissue graft. The approach that I like to take is typically laying it down in the position that we want. You can see that it actually has very good hydrophilic properties, so it will absorb the um, blood right away and essentially stay right in place where you put it. I then will go ahead and I will tack the matrix down by putting simple interrupted sutures into the papilla. And then we're going to go ahead and use our sutures to mattress over the graft matrix so that we can stabilize it and keep it in place. Then we're going to go ahead and advance our flap to coronally position the tissue, cover our graft matrix completely, and tack our tissue down. But everything has to be done in a tension-free and a passive way. The way to do this is to use a periosteal releasing incisions and then being able to advance the flap with a combination of simple interrupted sutures and sling sutures, which will swing around the teeth so that you can keep the flap as coronal as possible. So let's talk about the outcome of this case. At three-month post-op, you can really see the evidence of root coverage that has been achieved, and you can see how the tissue looks nice and healthy and mature, and we've been able to achieve our root coverage in this particular area. And then we can actually follow this up at the one-year post-op. We were able to achieve complete root coverage and an increase in the zone of keratinized tissue. But most importantly, we have achieved a dentochangeable complex that is amenable to long-term health and stability. And we were able to spare the patient from the morbidities typically associated with these root coverage procedures that are typical of, aut of autogenous tissue grafting. So just to review some of the keys to success, uh, we need to execute our surgeries properly. Uh, we want to manage our flaps very tediously. We want passive adaptation of the graft matrix when placed and tension-free coronal positioning of the flap so that it can stay exactly where we place it. The biomaterial that we use, Geishef Newton Graft, it requires no pretreatment, one of the reasons being that it's so hydrophilic. The matrix is applied to the defect dry and it moistens rapidly due to its hydrophilic properties, and the flap should be sutured tension-free to avoid compression of the graft. So thank you so much for your attention. It's been a pleasure to present this biobrief to you.